panelist yet. We will promote you to a panelist so you can present as soon as that item is called on the agenda. So uh, we have our chat disabled, but I, I am wanting to respond to you. You have your hand up and that is what our procedures are. We'll promote you as soon as the item is called. Thank you. Okay, they're officially late. <laughs> All right, uh, Eileen, are we waiting on any other members before joining uh, or before? Just, just uh, member Nathanson. Okay. You have a quorum, um, Kristen, so you can go ahead and call the meeting to order. Okay. Will do. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Calling the meeting to order. Welcome to the March 7th Art and Public Places Committee regular meeting. Uh, first off, a little housekeeping here. Pursuant to government code section 54953E and the recommendation of the health officer of the County of Sonoma, Art and Public Places Committee members will be participating in the meeting via Zoom webinar. At this point, will Eileen, our recording secretary, please let our public know how to participate in today's meeting. Certainly. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three public comment or during any of the scheduled items will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature or if calling in by pressing star nine on their phone. They will then be given the ability to address the committee. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, at this time, let's take roll call. Uh, Chair Keeper. Present. Vice Chair Jones Carter. Here. Member Baumgartner. Present. Member Fuentes. Present. Member Asterian. Present. Member Nathanson. Present. Let the record show that all members are present. Great. Sorry, Eileen, Bob, um, we oh, don't oh. have Bob on the call yet, so. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Um, I Please allow me to correct that. Uh, let the record reflect that all members with the exception of member Sayers are present. Thank you. Great, moving on to item three on our agenda, public comments. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Recording secretary, do we have any public comments for general items? We have no raised hands at this time, nor do we have any voicemail or email comments for this meeting. Okay. Moving right along, we'll move to item four, approval of minutes. Item 4.1, we have approval of minutes for the January 10th, 2022 special meeting. May I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes? As read. I, have, I just have a question before we do that, because when I read through the minutes, I know this was where it said that the motion failed but that happened after the meeting. So I, that was confusing to me. So um, the way that um, we addressed that um, was by providing an explanation of why it failed. Um, in, in there, I, I, I don't know if, if there's some additional wording you would like added. Um, I, Eileen, maybe I, wasn't correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that we put it that way uh, with consultation from the clerk's office, and we, that's we, what they recommended. It we did. Okay, so um, so uh, uh, upon direction from the city clerk's office, we were directed to put the actual uh, decision or what the ultimate outcome was um, to be reflected in the minute uh, in the kind of public record. Um, but again, what Eileen is asking, I suppose, is 
is there any further explanation that you feel would better reflect uh, what happened? And that's something that we can, um, we can add. I, I guess it doesn't matter. I just, it, it was, it just didn't reflect what really happened. So that was my only question. Um, yeah, understood. It's, it's, it was an, as the whole situation was kind of an unprecedented um, question mark for uh, most folks to tackle. So um, I believe that what the direction was, was to include that language to make it clear that ultimately the public record reflects that the motion did not pass. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question about that, that though. I, I, I sort of um, agree with Melanie that um, it seems like it would be good to somewhere record what happened with the process just for future reference if um, it would be informative. Um, so could it be listed as a footnote or in parentheses or perhaps in the minutes of today's meeting to reflect that we acknowledge that there was a procedural correction that happened and just somewhere to, to record that process. I think it would be useful. Eileen, is that something that we could, um, again, oh. run by this clerk's office to see if we could um, add a line uh, and amend? So what we would essentially not approve these minutes at this time, we could run by a, um, an addition to the wording and then bring them back to the committee for approval at the next meeting? Yes, I will do that. I will um, ask the clerks how we can include that. Thank you. Great, thank you for clarifying that we can make that amendment in today's process. All right, so the January 10th, 2022 special meeting minutes will return at the next Art and Public Places meeting. We do, we do still have the approval of minutes for the February 22nd, 2002, sorry, 2022 special meeting. Uh, can I get a motion to approve minutes, and then we can have discussion. I would like to make a motion to approve um, the minutes from February, uh, it's like 20, it's February 22nd, 2022, uh, for um, approved as submitted. I second. Thanks, Melanie. All right, are there any additions, questions, concerns regarding these special meeting minutes? Seeing none, uh, I would like to take a roll vote or a roll call vote. Thank you. Mayor Kiefer? Aye. Vice Chair Thomas Carter? Aye. Member Baumgartner? Member Fuentes? Aye. Member Nathanson? Aye. Member Asterian? Aye. Let the record reflect that all members present uh, have voted in the affirmative and meeting minutes for um, February 22nd have been approved as submitted. Great, thank you everyone. All right, moving on to item five on the agenda, scheduled items. Agenda item 5.1 is the Santa Rosa Junior College Earth Day Street Mural. Santa Rosa Junior College representatives will present a temporary community art project proposed for Elliott Avenue. The Transportation and Public Works Department has approved this location for temporary street art with conditions for cleanup and removal. This time uh, I will hand over the meeting to our presenter. Hey, we promoted Genevieve uh, Bortone and Alexa Forrester, and please let us know if you'd like any of your other team members promoted to help you present. And our recording secretary will share your presentation as soon as you're ready for that. Oh, oh sorry. Here it comes. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe they could introduce themselves first. You know what? Let me go ahead and. We're ready. We're ready. Um, I do have a couple of students. I know Andres is here. If you see Andres. Uh, what is Andres' last name? Oh, I, I That's okay. We, we see him on there. 
Okay, and I don't know if there's a Xavier also on the call. Uh, not, I do not see uh, Xavier. Okay. Okay, so Andres is our Vice President of Sustainability. I'll let him introduce himself. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go and then maybe Alexa and then Andres. So good afternoon. Thank you so much for the time on your agenda today. Really excited to be interfacing with our city art leaders. Um, my name is Dr. Genevieve Burton and I'm the Director of Student Life and Engagement at Santa Rosa Junior College. I've been involved in sustainability and social justice for over 25 years. And it's a great pleasure to help connect our community with our college. And the special sauce in between is always the students and the youth, um, which is the future for all. And with that, I'll pass it over to Alexa, Dr. Forrester. Hi, everybody. I'm Alexa Forrester. I teach philosophy at the junior college, including environmental philosophy. And in the process of doing that for the last 15 years, I've been, become very engaged in projects to try to help engage um, our students and county in general in uh, taking the climate crisis seriously and giving them an optimistic vision for how we can work together to make a resilient Sonoma County. So that's what's inspiring my participation in this project. And I will hand it over to Andres if he's ready to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. So my name is Andres. Uh, I am the president of, the, of sustainability in the student government at SIJC. I am also the president of the sustainability club. Um, so I have been working on different projects at the, uh, at the junior college. Um, my major is ecology and just super excited to work with, with, uh, with environment and, you know, uh, hopefully have a better future for future generations. Thank you, Andres. I don't know if you all are aware, but the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change just came out with a new report, really demonstrating how climate change and social equity are just in, inextricably linked. And that the lower of status and the less power or wealth you have, the more vulnerable you are to climate change. So we're really looking forward to bringing together movements of all different kinds to help paint a livable future for all at Santa Rosa Junior College's Elliott Ave, which intersects our campus and is also slated to be closed for a pilot closure project to increase pedestrian safety. And we've already gotten that approved through CEQA and I included that CEQA approval in the document, but um, we're waiting for the students to get back on campus. We've been closed for the past two years so we've done a lot of work in the background and um, have really tried to dot all of our uh, I's and cross all the T's. And we're looking to this committee to see what I's we've missed, what T's we've missed, and to get your full support for the project. Um, I'm not sure what kind of projects you uh, are used to approving. I, I assume this one's maybe a little bit different because it's on the street. I know that can be unusual, but these street murals have taken root across the nation, particularly with the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement. But really, you know, movement art in general has, as Alexa or Dr. Forrester said, really become a beacon of hope and a way of um, speaking everyone's language. Art, you know, it crosses languages, it crosses perspectives. And this mural in particular is gonna allow everyone to bring their diverse perspective and view on what a livable future for all looks like. So you have in front of you our proposal. Uh, we have developed and approved traffic control plans for Elliott. We have, um, we're proposing sort of phase one and phase two because we're not looking forward to turning people away should we outgrow the existing footprint. So we have one um, demonstrate or one sketch that takes us to Albany. And then the extension takes us down past Kundi Hall to Planetarium Way, which is a parking lot, basically a parking lot there. There's still more route all the way down to Armory. And each one of those sketches has the, um, you know, the dimensions of the space. You can scroll down. So we've already secured all of the necessary funding. We just got um, the last $1,500 approved from our student government. Thank you, Andres. And uh, we literally just left that approval to come here and hopefully we'll just keep the momentum going. Um, and we have included street cleaning services as part of our proposal. We are seeking to get those donated and I'll be working on that over the next couple of months. 
but we know exactly what it's gonna to take to clean the mural prior to the first rains coming. The theme is a livable future for all. And I was wondering if Dr. Forrester wanted to speak to the theme. Yeah, thanks, Genevieve. Um, so the we're proposing this large temporary mural as a way to do in microcosm what we need to do as a society, which is bring all perspectives to the table to dream a different course for us all and create a society that's genuinely sustainable and equitable for everybody. So a, a, a society in which everybody can thrive. And of course, that requires us to care for our shared home, the planet Earth, upon which all of our prosperity depends. But it also uh, requires us to look at the systems that have threatened that home and that have also historically led to much injustice and inequality. So we're hoping to bring to the table everybody, everybody, because everybody has a stake in the, the future of this county to create a, a mural in which all of those perspectives are represented. So the way that we're doing this is with the help of the Climate Justice Street Mural Project, which is a, a group of folks out of the Bay Area that are helping consult on this and who have used this model elsewhere throughout the Bay Area and all of California, the general idea is that there are 12 foot circles throughout the mural and different student clubs, academic departments and community organizations can reserve one of those circles and use that circle to design their own vision of a livable future or the way that their group is fighting for a livable future. Um, so that might look different if it's a, if it's the teachers union that's painting a circle versus if it's black student union painting the circle, right? They might have slightly different perspectives, but then they're all threaded together against a backdrop of clay paint uh, with a Native American basket weave um, pattern that was uh, designed by um, a, a native of this area. And, um, and that way we're all working together and weaving all of those pieces together into one vision. In addition to the 12 foot circles that will be designed and painted by non-professional artists, um, we have recruited the support of the Monarch Project and Raiza's Collective to do two slightly larger, so 24 foot circles um, in the mural to, to, to provide anchor images and really sort of up the, up the game and the community involvement. So that is our vision and how the, the meaning and the, the nuts and bolts of how it gets done. Yeah. Yeah, if you could go to the next page. So Dr. Forster and I have per, uh, participated in many of these street murals in the Bay Area, and we can attest that this is a well-oiled machine. As you see in the list of partners and artists, David Solnit and Gemma Sorrell, um, they have a street mural manual and they've thought this through every uh, little detail and they've done it in multiple different spaces with a variety of different types of partners and sort of themes. They've done bigger and smaller single murals, um, but the, the image that you see on your screen now, this is sort of the goal for us. Uh, each one of the circles are painted by individuals, as Alexis said, non-professional artists that are really just speaking their perspective on what's required for a livable future. And then we will have um, some words woven throughout the mural for, for all in different languages, like para todo, para sahat. And that will be the words that will kind of tie it all together and bring it into very visually uh, thematic space and tied to our theme, a livable future for all. The circles, as uh, Alexa said, are about 12 feet and they'll be supported with professional artists and consultants. We are requiring any participant to attend an online orientation as well as an on-site training. And we are providing all of the materials and we are also, um, as you know, members of the Santa Rosa Junior College, we're very familiar with COVID protocols. So we'll be providing a very safe environment, including masks and sanitizer will be provided. We're providing hand washing stations. Um, and many of these groups are already bubbled up together because they're gonna be coming with their team to you know, paint in their circle. The mural will also be open to the public um, to, per, to paint on. Um, as Alexa said, this red clay that you see as the backdrop 
It's uh, again, a non-toxic, all natural material. And we paint those with big rollers on the street. And so, you know, if you don't have a group, there's still a way for members of the community to plug in and paint and be a part of the installation. Andres, would you like to speak to uh, what you're excited about the mural and then we'll take questions. Sure. So as a student, uh, I feel like this is uh, very important for for the junior college because um, like I have seen the in many classes the uh, students are not the same anymore. They're very like in their phones, just you know texting or you know social media. They don't interact with other students, and uh, some of them they're scared. Um, so there are many things going on, and I feel like this is a a way that we can. Uh, have all the students in one place, you know, and it's going to be outdoors. Um, and so they can, you know, start interacting with other students and have uh, connections. Um, also, this is uh, fascinated because it's art. And also probably we're going to have music uh, from the uh, music department. And uh, we're trying to have, uh, you know, a, an event uh, where everyone is going to enjoy this and also learn about all the themes uh, or all the ideas that the students will uh, provide about the livable future. So I'm super excited and hopefully we can do this and, you know, um, um, have as many students as we can out there and working on this. Thank you, Andres. I think that concludes our presentation. We'd be happy to take any questions. Do I do I um, call on people or is there a chair with I don't know the protocol? I'm sorry. Yeah, the chair will field the questions. Thank I mean, you. she'll she'll call on members. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation, uh, Melanie. Do you have a question for our presenters? Melanie, you're on mute. Um, how does the community get involved? Yeah, so we will invite the community so, to submit ideas for their own mural. So let's say the APPC wants to have a mural. We would invite you to fill out the form. Um, once we get the green light from this committee and we've talked with Tara and we're going to start getting people involved, we just want to make sure, as I said, that we've provided a really safe and empowering space. And we know that means building a lot of of you know a lot of these meetings and so this is one of our final meetings like this and then we're ready to start really um, announcing this opportunity to the public it'll be a really easy google form we'll ask you who your group is what's your idea roughly and then we'll ask you to commit to like having four people on the day of and attending those required trainings so i can put the well, i can send the website to tara to share with you i, I guess i was asking how how do how will they find out about this project or how is it being marketed i guess that's thank you way. do you we'd love, we'd love to have ideas yeah <laughs> well, ideas. so do you want to a couple of things that we already have planned is a blast to uh the entire college community both to our students and all of our faculty and staff to let them know also, our partner um, organizations, like I know Raizes Collective, is already working with some Roseland University Prep students who want to be involved. Um, and the Monarch Project as well has volunteers that they're hoping to bring in. But then we're, we're also just part of community networks, and we're just going to start spreading throughout those community networks. So I am involved in Sonoma County uh, uh, Climate Action Network. The, uh, I, I'm an elder for the Sunrise Sonoma County Hub and the Sonoma County Climate Mobilization. So I'm going to be blasting it to all those folks. And basically, we're asking everybody to contact everybody they know. That's our plan. But if you have other <laughs> suggestions, we would always welcome them. Okay. And we are sending a letter to all of our neighbors, mm -hmm. which I think is like a thousand individuals. And we'll be inviting. Again, community organizations, and we'll do some target invites as well um, with some of our, maybe our, our labor organizations in the county or some of our community, you know, our city partnerships. So we have, as, as Alexa said, some community networks, but 
Um, it would be great if you had any ideas on just how to get it to the general population. If you have any Facebook groups or social media that you could, um, we have a flyer and a website kind of, as I said, ready to go as soon as we get our final approvals. So we would welcome any support in getting it out to uh, the city uh, at large. We just covered. And in fact, I'm, I'm more concerned about too much interest, but we have a plan for that too. And we're also asking student groups that are like-minded if they want to partner on a circle. So we have like the bio club and the chemistry club. They may have a shared vision of how science might contribute to a livable future. So we'll be doing some mixing and matching as well. Hi, Jeff, you had comment or questions? Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, well, uh, I'm Jeff Nathanson. I'm the uh, director of the Museum of Sonoma County. And uh, I really appreciate this um, presentation because it looks like a great project. I just wanted to um, offer that if you're trying to really expand the reach to the community, our museum um, served as a hub for um, post uh, wildfire um, collaborations throughout the community uh, after the 2017 wildfires. And we have continue to keep those um, uh, cultural organization, uh, that net network um, you know, alive and, and well and trying to, you know, just communicate with one another. Uh, we, we'd be happy to help spread the word far and wide. Um, I can also understand if you think it might be too much, but um, feel free to reach out because uh, it looks like a great project. We would love to be, um, uh, supportive of what you're doing. Thank you. We'll be following up for sure. <laughs> so you had a question. Did you call me? Lisa, sorry. Yes. Now I have some questions and some comments. Um, so first of all, this is exciting. Uh, from my knowledge and what I can remember, the junior college does not have an, a large mural anywhere on campus, an outdoor mural. If, if, you, if you do, please let me know and I stand corrected. Um, but so something like this is really exciting because I don't recall seeing any kind of large mural on campus. Um, also too, I just wanted to make sure when I'm looking at the map in phase one, we have all of the um, circles, but then there's a space in between. Is that a space in between in the middle? Is that the walkway? Because that's going to be the heavy, more heavy traffic. And so that's why there's not one there. Okay. And then how are you going about choosing who do these circles go to? Which clubs, which organizations? And how are you, if there's quite a few people, if there's more people who want to be involved than circles there is, then there are circles. Um, and even if you are going to divide them up, how are you going to make those choices? And um, is this going to be something that a group of you are going to um, take over? And uh, yes, I, so that's a, that's a question. One yeah, of my just questions. Had, thank oh, you. We just had a conversation about that um, over the weekend about the criteria that we are going to be using. And mm -hmm identify a few um, a few priorities being connected to the college is one of them um, being tied to the theme would be another and it being maybe environmental in nature since it's an Earth Day event we also talked about accessibility um, if you have some accessibility issues or you have are you representing you know um, disabled students with disabilities or community members with disabilities we would give priority and uh, there was one more, wasn't there, Alexa? What else did we say was going to help guide this? Oh, and then we, we said we were going to be strategic. We asked people on the forum, would you be willing to partner? So we'll also just say, even if they're not like-minded, maybe they could become like-minded in their design. Um, and then that's that plan B for the extension. So we don't anticipate with the extension, which has been approved by the college and does have an approved traffic control plan in place. So it is an option. We could get up to 20... How many circles with the extension, Alexa? So with the extension, just to Cundy Hall, it's um, 40 circles. So, I mean, I would be thrilled if 40 <laughs> organization, you know, um, but yeah, so um, yeah. Yeah. And we do plan to have students on the, on, I'm hoping Andres will be available to help us make those decisions as well. Okay. 
So students and organizations within the JC are gonna be a priority. Yes. Okay, great. And is this, this will be the largest outdoor mural at the JC, correct? And does the JC have any outdoor murals at this time? No, but I do remember seeing an email coming through that our art commission is currently in the process of approving one for installation. I, right. I maybe that's indoors though. Oh, oh that's indoors. Okay. <laughs> Bummer. We did. But, we do have one in Petaluma that just got approved for the onsite of our multicultural center. So they are actually in concept um, design down there, but no, we don't have any outdoor murals here at the college. Okay. I think the indoor mural you're referring to is the uh, one that was commissioned by Maria Maria de los Angeles, right? Yeah, so we, we've worked really closely with her and we know about that mural. I like the idea. I'm glad, Lisa, you asked that question about outdoor murals. I think uh, the junior college is uh, ready for one. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It is very much so. And my other question was too, so the draft plan of these, uh, who do they get run? I saw that you had the approvals there that you were waiting for, but um, I mean, we got a general idea on what's going on there, but we, we have not seen the draft and I don't know if anybody else has seen the draft. Or is that just something that's going to be uh, in the making and who is going to approve those drafts? How, what's the criteria for that? Because I know you did talk about the criteria and it needs to be something related. But um, what kind of, <laughs> how are you guys, how are you going about judging that and um, going to evaluate the criteria of that? Yeah, so we have a timeline that includes a submission of a draft and then a submission of a final prior to a training. And so I have worked with David Solnit and Gemma Searle on some of the other process projects and um, the, we really want to empower people who are not professional artists to give it a try, you know, so we don't want to be too persnickety about the beauty or aesthetic, you know, we really want them to take ownership of it. So we will work with them and their vision, but we do have all of these professional artists that are working with us through Reyes' Collective and Monarch Project and David and Gemma. So they will be there to help refine ideas that come in. I'm hoping that we aren't going to have to turn away any groups. And so, you know, it'll just be like, okay, let's see your draft. Here's how it can be improved. And especially for painting on the street where you're not going to get really fine grain detail, you know, sort of like, oh, it might be easier if you just kind of giving that kind of advice um, and working with them. So hopefully they really see themselves in the final product. Yeah. I don't know if that addresses your question. No, that does. That sounds wonderful. And again, you just reminded me that you are working with those, those groups. So which does help because I've seen their, their work and I'm familiar with what they do. So that's, I'm really happy to hear that. And I mean, I clicked on all your, um, what you had on here. The only, there was one, the street murals and movement that was a New York times. You have to have a subscription to open that up. So that might be an issue for a lot of other people who do not have a paper specific you know, subscription to the New York Times, just a thing for a heads up. Thank you. But yes, but otherwise, everything on here, it's, I'm excited, <laughs> very excited. <laughs> if you guys could all make it, we'd love to have you the day of. Absolutely. And you had a few questions? Uh, uh, two things, more like um, in, the, in the nature of wayfinding and, um, are you going to be, how, first of all, how long is this going to stay up? Is so, it a, we're, we'll install it on April 22nd and we've committed to take it down by October 1st. Before. Okay, great. That's what I thought, through the summer. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and I just was thinking about like schools and, you know, in the aftermath of the making, the making is obviously, you don't want billions of people there when you're making. Um, I mean, some would be great I'm, or maybe you do. I don't know if you have a way to, to, to manage that, but I just was wondering about, just, I'm newer to the area, but I lived up in an apartment up there for like the last year. So I'm really familiar with Elliot. I was right off of that. And it is kind of this street you, there's a light there and all that kind of thing, but you know, it buffs on to Mendocino and that's just a huge street. And there's, where are people, where can people park if they want to go 
see it. And just when you're advertising it to schools and to people you want to come view it, I just thinking about how can I access the JC because there isn't free parking. It's really hard to park. So just like that, even if you need to walk from here or you can get established some place that people could park and things like this, thinking about getting yeah. more people to it. I think that's really cool. And I really, I just really love the idea. I love the scale that is super exciting. And just the, the, the design on that kind of scale is really gonna like, like you said, it's going to kind of encompass all these small pieces are going to be caught in the in the embrace of this large plant, which is really beautiful. So thanks. Yeah, and I do, I haven't asked this of Andres yet, but I am hoping that one of the things Andres will do is take a photo of each one of the murals. This has been done in previous installations by David and Gemma. And then on our website, our website, which is going to be promoting participation, will then turn into a a documentation website where we have each mural, we have what was the inspiration of the mural, the organization's link, and we do have metered parking very close to the Elliott Ave in Burbank Circle. So we'll be sure on the website when it flips over to a great educational thing to include parking. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's great. And Genevieve, I don't think I had a chance to tell you, but I did hear from Donald Laird, who is a, a professor at the college and teaches our drone technology that he will be available that morning to bring out his drone and do a, you know, um, full Sweet. picture from above. Yeah. Great. Do any other committee members have any questions for our presenters? I have a couple of questions. Um, so I didn't quite hear the date of installation. Was that at the end of April? April 22nd, Earth Day. Okay. It's a Friday, Friday morning, April 22nd. Great, thank you. And then in terms of the approval process, will there be um, a, a date when you select which items are, are to be painted or, or sorry, which, which proposals have been accepted? What, what is your expected cutoff date for making that decision? So we anticipate um, March 25th to close the Google form where we're accepting ideas. And then as uh, Dr. Forrester said, we'll move into helping the groups that were selected either partner or refine their vision to ensure that it, it's doable, it's aesthetically pleasing and that it's, you know, that nothing, we don't get off the mark there. So from basically March 25th to April 22nd, we'll be helping the, we'll notify and then help the participants refine their design. Yeah, and I think we're asking people to have their final draft done by the Sunday prior, which is when there will be an on-site training and they can practice painting it. We're setting aside a corner of one of our parking lots for them to practice painting so they that they're kind of prepared for the day of. Great, thank you. Glad that you guys have considered uh, lead times and preparation times in your, in your calendar of events for this. At this time, I would like to ask for uh, our recording secretary to let us know if there's any public comments on this item. I have no raised hands at this time. Okay. Great. Uh, in order for our committee to have a discussion, I would like for there to be a motion put on the table. Would any committee member like to raise or, or present a motion for this item? Well, I'll make the motion that we open discussion on the, the mural. So the recommended uh, recommended action is to approve the art um, design. So that in this case, it's more of a concept. So if we could get a motion to approve or another motion, then discussion can happen. Okay, then I'll make it a motion to approve. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Do any committee members have any items that they would like to discuss regarding the um, concept of this with the eventual um, acknowledgement that a design will be decided upon at a later date? Jeff. 
I'll just say that I think it's really great for um, this committee, for the Art and Public Places Committee to be supporting uh, projects like this that are based in the community and at uh, local educational institutions. And so I'm really pleased to um, uh, support this motion. And um, I think the, uh, pr the presentation was sufficient for me to uh, understand that the concept, especially around the environment, climate change and uh, happening on Earth Day is something that um, I feel um, is really important for us to support. So um, I'm glad to vote for this. Great, thank you. Lisa, you have a comment? And I just wanna, my, my understanding since this is not going to be removed till um, October and um, fall gets started, what is the end of August? So this will be there and the streets will be closed for when um, school does its full swing and all the students are there again, correct? No, no, the, the street is only going to be closed for the one day, April oh, just 22nd for installation. And then it will be open to regular use and then um, cleaned up uh, before the rains begin. So that's where the October 1st date comes from. Go ahead, Alexa. Yeah, with just one, Clarification, because it's not really in our control, but a big portion of where the mural is going to be is slated to be closed. It's like going to be closed to through traffic between the two entrances to the emeritus parking lot, which is a big stretch of it. So um, I think that's worked its way all the way through the city. I just don't know. At some point, they're going to close that part of the street to through traffic um, and it will be only um accessible by bikes and pedestrians and um, emergency vehicles if needed. But again, that, I don't... Sorry, just to clarify, is that due to the construction or is that for some other purpose? No, I have a link to the pilot project of the closing of Elliott Ave that's already been through all of the approval in CEQA. Um, and so what it is, is it's, as Alexa said, just a small stretch that we're going to close in a pilot, uh, in a pilot uh, to see how it works because we, the college, I think, and the city, because we've had a lot of pedestrian accidents on this street. Um, we are hoping that if it's successful, if no neighbors, if there's, you know, if we're not seeing any major disruptions that we can eventually close this section and allow more pedestrian traffic in a safer environment. So currently there is, there is an approved pilot that we, they, we've told them that we've postponed the launch of the pilot because we were closed. So we have been waiting to reopen the campuses before initiating that pilot closure of the small piece of Elliott. So, but for our day, uh, the larger portion of Elliott will be closed so that we can paint the street. And then I, I'm guessing that in the fall, they might initiate that pilot closure, but that is under our facilities and operations department. So, um, but the link to the CEQA document in the proposal. Yeah, I saw that and I read that and it said something about fall of 2021. So that's why I was confused too. And so I'm guessing you guys, you pushed it back and that's going to be closed. And I'm not, I'm not clear on how far is that pushed back. I know you guys are closing April 22nd. And then if that's going to close, how much longer is that going to go till? Because I think it said spring of 2022, which I mean, it, the link that you had, it doesn't have the correct date. So that's where I'm. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think they asked for a postponal because, um, and we're, and we're granted it given that our college was closed due to COVID. So normally I don't think those things are flexible, but I think they were granted a special, uh, kind of postponement of that pilot street closure project because we don't have any, because one of the things is to see if we have reduced pedestrian accidents or interfacing, you know, mm -hmm. Um, cause sometimes it's not an accident. It's just an altercation. Um, but if we, so the idea is that we can see that pedestrians are having a better time there and, and there's more safety, but we can't really fully, you know, actualize the benefits of the project if we don't have pedestrians on our campus. So that's why the dates are wrong is because we were hoping to be reopened by then, but we do anticipate reopening in fall 2022. Okay, great. Thank you for making that clear. And what about summertime too? We're hoping. <laughs> okay, but well, you haven't gotten word or you're not sure as of yet. 
No, we do know that we're coming back two days a week, April 18th. The st- okay. But all of our learning is online at this point for 40%. Only We only have 40% on our campus. So 60% is online. Okay. So the summer schedule, I think, is about the same, 40, 60. And then fall, we're hoping will be more the reverse, at least, where it's 60% in person and 40% online. But again, as, as Alexa said, that's much, mm-hmm. much out of our okay. kind of scope. Yeah, I think my concern too, just right now is um, with the proposal of being that closed on the April 22nd, after you do it, we don't have a for sure that that street's going to be closed. And so there will be car traffic, which could make a big difference on how well that's maintained and with how well it's going to last. Um, so that's definitely in question. Yeah, it's not meant to be a permanent installation, so it will get worn down. Um, and luckily, it's not a high traffic street, as I believe one of your members indicated. It's pretty much used by the neighbors and our and our you know our community, so that will benefit us. Um, and so, yeah, this if let if this goes well and the pilot goes well, maybe we can repaint something a little more permanent on there um, just for the pedestrian. So it's this is kind of a pilot within a pilot. And again, one of our key goals the day of is to capture all the artwork. And so it will live on in digital perpetuity. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for your concerns. Appreciate it. Great. I would like to echo uh, Jeff Nathanson's comment in regards to the importance of supporting mural projects like this and and supporting creative ties for environmental um, awareness. I I think back to the uh, approval process that our our committee got to be part of with the the storm drain uh, installations around Railroad Square and painting the streets to the creeks uh, kind of connection point, uh, just giving, you know, a pause to think there and how successful that project had been. Um, So I I applaud your guys' efforts in thinking of a a way to reach out to so many people and to make this such a community-wide project. So I, I also am very excited to see this move forward. Uh, And with that, I would like to take a roll call vote for this project. Chair Kiefer? Aye. Vice Chair Jones Carter? Oh. Aye. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Member Baumgartner? Aye. Member Quintus? Aye. Member Nathanson? Member Sayers? Yes. Member Asterian? Aye. But the record reflects that um, this um, item has been approved unanimously. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you you. all. And may I say before I leave that of all the Zoom calls I've been on, this one has the most fabulous pairs of glasses. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Have a great afternoon, you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the mural. (laughs) See you there. Wonderful. Yes. Send us the sign up information and how to be involved. We will absolutely. Thank you. Great. All right, moving on with our scheduled items. We're now looking at item 5.2, project updates. Uh, Staff will present updates on current projects. I'll hand this over to Tara. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, Let me get my notes out in front of me. They disappeared. Okay, there they are. Um, I just have a few updates for today. Um, We've been, of course, moving forward with um, the artist's final design and engineering for UNAM after the last approval uh, at the special meeting in February. So no further updates there. Um, For the Fifth Street Parking Garage project, the Help Each Other Grow design, by MJ and Joshua Lawyer. Um, They, uh, we right now, we are still awaiting the final signatures for their contract. And as soon as we have that, we will be working with them on their implementation timeline. And I'll be reporting back 
um, any updates to that as soon as, as soon as I can. For the Asawa panels for the Courthouse Square Fountain, the foundry we are working with in Berkeley uh, Artworks Foundry is continuing to work on the engineering for the panel attachment to the fountain, as well as refining the scanning and mold making adjustments um, to make sure the final product is good. So no further updates um, other than they're continuing to work, work on that and make progress. For the artists in the general plan project, um, we've continued to work with the Santa Rosa Forward team, and we have identified an arts and equity consultant, Nico Kimzen with Kimzen Creative, who will be contracting with us for planning, production, and documentation for this project. This will include identifying artists and sites in the equity priority communities for projects based on the topics of environmental justice, health, and housing. And again, to remind you, the last meeting I announced that there was um, a Kaiser Foundation grant that was able to fund um, most of the work with um, Nico on this, as well as some of the actual projects. And we'll be bringing back a final outline of what that budget looks like, um, uh, probably in at the April meeting. Um, the other project that um, came up recently, I believe it was when Kristen Madsen presented uh, to the committee back last fall, um, is a project called Art Surround, which is um, run by Creative Sonoma. And the city is essentially considered an advocate um, and partner on the project. But it essentially is um, for um, training for both advocates and artists, as well as grants for artists to complete projects all throughout Sonoma County. And the intention is how to work with um, your community, how to support artists in your community, training for advocates. So meaning training for arts organizations, nonprofits, private businesses, chambers of commerce who want to support artists. Um, so training along those lines, as well as training for artists on how to do projects in, in public and with the community. And so the funding from the city's public art fund for this project will obviously go towards projects located in Sonoma County. Uh, but there are uh, other partners throughout the county that will be um, a part of this as well. So that, that's supposed to be kicking off this summer. And um, hopefully we'll have some more updates to bring you as that moves forward. Those are all of the project updates I have for today. So happy to answer any other questions about those. Otherwise, um, I have a few more updates to provide under department reports a little bit later on the agenda. Thank you, Tara. Do any committee members have questions for the uh, project updates that we just heard? Seeing none, I will move along with our agenda. Thanks. Item seven, we have future agenda items. This schedule is tentative and subject to change pending final publication and posting of the meeting agenda. This time is reserved for discussion whether to place matters on future agenda for future discussions. Uh, our future agenda's ongoing list includes private partnerships, commercial real estate and local artists. How can the Pu Art and Public Places Committee support community programs or events? Uh, third, we have fire commemoration memorial project. And lastly, we have budget for visiting artists and a, or a lecture program. Do any committee members have any suggestions of what other topics to add to future agendas? Member Nathanson. Thank you. Um, we have a committee of the museum um, exploring the possibility of creating hopefully in partnership with the city, a um, what we're calling a heritage walk, although it might have a different title in the future, but for a working title, heritage walk, um, in order to try to create um, paths that uh, pedestrians can follow to lead them to um, key places in downtown. Um, we are only in the very, very early stages of conceptualizing this, um, 
this project, but it would ideally um, connect Courthouse Square to the museum, the library, to Railroad Square, um, perhaps to some other key um, organizations or sites. And then along the way, we would have markers. Um, you might employ some kind of um, GPS or QR code technology to help um, people who are exploring the city to learn about the history and culture of Santa Rosa. And so um, I don't envision bringing this to a discussion topic uh, for quite a few months, but I wanted to at least put it on the list to um, have a future agenda item for a heritage walk in downtown Santa Rosa. Great, thank you. That should be a great discussion coming up in a few months. And if we have any initial comments, uh, can we reach out to you with our thoughts about how to um, move along with this process or who to reach out to? Uh, you can reach out to me and uh, I'll just mention uh, Raisa, uh, you have been uh, involved with one of the committees that's been talking about this. So uh, we certainly have to have uh, many more discussions and meetings before we bring it to APPC, but just in the uh, interest of being on the list, <laughs> I'm mentioning it. Great, thank you. Melanie. I'm not muted, okay, good. Um, I just thought with the members of Art and Public Places like to submit a proposal for the Earth Day project. We have to move quickly, apparently, <laughs> if we want to. <laughs> I'm no artist, but several of you are, I believe. <laughs> That's some good marketing <laughs> for us. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah, I'd be up for it. Yeah. Okay. We got two. I would Wait. also be up for this. All right. Tara, is this legal? Can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe you can have a maximum of three sub. You can form a subcommittee, uh, mm -hmm. essentially, of three of you, but mm -hmm. no more um, to meet she and needs discuss. four people, apparently. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and then, I mean, you could essentially design a pro, a, 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 you could design a design and then you, I don't, I don't, I don't actually know exactly what proper procedures would need to be in place to like have the full committee be in support of it. But I, I would say a subcommittee of three of you can, can proceed. Mm -hmm. And then if all of committee members want to attend and participate mm -hmm. in a public event, you are free to. There's no quorum issue there. Okay. It's more a matter of like designing. Um, I, I, I think if you're discussing business related to the, anyway, um, I'm probably not answering this super clearly, but I believe that that's how I, I would interpret it. But Raisa, please go ahead if you have anything. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's right. I think it's just, um, I think if you're, um, if you're discussing uh, matters of the body, then it's, it's three people, but otherwise everybody can participate in, um, uh, in the um, paint, in the painting of the New Orleans. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think it's great. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So I, I saw three people <coughs> who, who said that they would like to be interested. Who would like to uh, participate? So. Yeah. Okay. You you want to take the lead on getting our name on? Sure, I will do that. Getting us on the, getting the info from them, it sounded like. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Okay, great. so I, I just want to make sure that we're clear because um, Melanie, you suggested this, but I think it's three other members who just volunteered to be. Yeah, so only three of them can, only three total can do it. Yes, got it. Yeah. Or I, I'll get the information, the but I'm no artist, so I'm willing to just back away after that. But then How's show that? up and paint, yeah. Oh, I, I will definitely show up and paint. <laughs> <laughs> I can paint big spaces. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I think that's a great idea. I do too. Okay. I'll show up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> great. Um, Chair Kiefer, for the record, it sounds like it's you, member Baumgartner, and member Puentes, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we would be coordinating on the design yeah. and then yeah. we would open it up for the rest of the committee to join us. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think- Who's an artist out of here, of this group? Anne, I know. Anne. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Chair Kiefer is an architect, which is in the arts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Everyone's I, an artist, right? Everyone. Every, yes. <laughs> do you Who's have a background of drawing any, and painting? Do we have any muralists? <laughs> uh, I've done some mural work. Yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Definitely, Anne, you are going to be one of them on there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad. Well, every, Nathan, every Nathan is an artist as well, I believe. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Come on, Nathan. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, All right, I was Nathan. just going to say each, each art project um, should have a lead artist or designated collaborators, but it sounds to me like Anne is volunteering to be the lead artist. So, um, thank you so much. That's, <laughs> that's good. Okay. I'm, to I'm totally cool with that. Yes. All right. <laughs> Melanie's helping me. Can she help me with get to the. Yeah, I'll do the administrative stuff. Admin stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. And we I can help with printing things at a large size if that's needed. Yeah. Oh, I said yes. <laughs> and then we get denied <laughs> after submission. <laughs> it's okay for us to communicate about it. That's 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 chill on the whole. Three being, people. Yeah, I mean, to me, I don't. I actually don't even know. I mean, you approve? Are you? Sorry, you're on mute. Yeah. Sorry, I was making a really excellent point. Apparently, <laughs> nobody heard it. No. Um, I. Because you approved their design of their project and now you're participating, I'm not, you know, it, it, it to me, it feels like a different level of participation. The, the decisions that have been made um, are not weighing in to your participation as members of the public. Mm -hmm. But but to be on the safe side, again, I would just recommend that no more than three of you meet to discuss the design that you want to submit. And right. then um, I, you can send me whatever you would like me to send out to the full committee so that there can be then broad information sharing with all committee members about any any uh, participation in the painting itself. Awesome. Great. Great. Excellent. And um, before I forget, I believe we skipped over item six on the agenda. So Chris, and maybe after we close up future agenda items, you could go back to that one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was planning on doing that, but you you caught me. <laughs> All right. Do any other committee members have any future agenda items to add to our list? Seeing none, I would like to go back to item six, committee reports. Uh, 6.1, ad hoc task, for task force reports and discussions. Um, it's been a few months since we've reported out on these items uh, or on these task forces. Uh, does the diversity, equity, inclusion, and access task force have any updates to give to our group? There we go. Yeah. We don't at this moment. Um, we do have um, plans. It's basically, next month we will. We will have a lot something to report and we are working on things to have something done by the next meeting for sure. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. All right. Community engagement. Is there any up nothing to report? Okay. Hey Melanie, why don't we uh, meet so we can have Something to report something for next month. month. Okay, sounds a like a plan. Idea. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. All right, and I will speak for uh, project development. We also currently don't have any new news to report to our committee. Um, I will check in with Tara regarding the. Um, Santa Rosa Forward, our artist in the general plan process. Um, and, um, and Nathan, if you want to add any. Yeah, just briefly. Um, 
I've been working with a group from Southern California. Um, uh, and that's going to result in an art fair uh, that'll happen on May 14th in Juilliard Park. Um, and that'll be a combination of um, uh, alternative art spaces from the area, but also from sort of further afield. Um, and if anyone's curious about that, I'll forward the email about it to Tara to distribute to the other members of the committee. Yes, I would love information on that. And Nathan, we also share, sorry to put you on the spot, will you share more about what um, Ben is presenting about this Sunday at your place? He, um, so Ben Kinmont's a, an artist and an antiquarian bookseller who lives in Sebastopol, but um, has a, a, um, a long history of uh, kind of conceptual art practice um, starting in New York in the early in the late 80s. And um, he's going to show some video work and publications. Um, it's three different projects, um, sort of they're, they're different instantiations of these projects over, over the period from 1990 to 2018. And, um, and he'll be publishing those at Escalar, which is the, um, which is the sort of project space that happens in my yard. <laughs> um, and that'll be on Sunday. And it'd be great to see all of you there, if you can make it. Nathan, can I ask a question? Uh-huh. Um, is, is that gonna be um, a presentation like starting at a certain point, ending at a certain point? Is it gonna be a drop? It'll, it'll go from one to five. Right. In a continuum, like, like, so if you're coming, you're coming for four hours, like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, there's two video works and yeah. some uh, works on paper, and then Ben will be published publishing things on a small press here. So that and that'll sort of run for the duration. Gotcha. Great, thank you. And thanks, yeah, thank Tara, you. for distributing that information so we have the details. Mm -hmm. Great, okay, moving on to item eight on our agenda, department reports. Uh, I will kick it back to Tara. This time is reserved for city staff to provide a briefing on issues of interest. Great, thanks. I just have a few very brief updates that don't really fit under project reports, but that are also going on with our department. Um, the National Arts Program is back uh, for an in-person exhibit at Finley this year. So it again is a, a community art program where residents of Santa Rosa and or employees of the city of Santa Rosa can enter one artwork um, into the show and it's juried for awards. It's supported by a grant we get from the National Arts Program Foundation and we give out over $3,000 worth of awards. Um, this year we had some great jurors um, and Jessica runs this this program uh, but the reception is this Sunday unfortunately conflicts a little bit with um, the event at Nathan's place um, so it's a 3 p.m reception at the Finley Community Center it's only one hour this year we're keeping it short um, during COVID we're not serving, serving food it's a little bit pared down from the normal reception we usually have but we will be in person handing out the awards and viewing the show there's, I think, about 160 um, pieces in the show this year. Um, last year, if you recall, we did have it online. We, had, we did all virtual um, uh, last year. And, it, the, and in 2020, it was still up. It essentially got shut down during the COVID shutdown. Um, so we installed the show, but we were not able to um, have it up for its full, its full length in 2020. So we're happy to be having it back in person. Um, let's see what else. Um, soon I want to share with you the pre preview of our new Out There San Rosa website. We are getting to the point um, of being able to launch it very soon and planning some launch activities in April. Um, so perhaps at the next meeting, I can walk you through what it's starting to look like. There's a great um, representation of public art and arts in general on the site. That's very exciting. Um, the 
ARPA funds, um, which is the American Rescue Black Plan Act, um, we are using some of those funds or proposing, proposing to use some of those funds for uh, small business support in qualified census tracts. And a part of that will be a facade improvement component that will be a, essentially run by the public art program where we will contract with an, an art, arts nonprofit to manage murals and other art profits on the facade of participating businesses. Um, so that's an exciting partnership between public art and economic development and um, using some of those ARPA funds. I also wanted to briefly mention uh, Fremont Park. Um, some of you may be seeing on Facebook or other social media um, that there's a consultant hired by the Parks Department to redo the master plan for Fremont Park. Fremont Park is a small park downtown on 4th Street near Hope Street. Um, and in the park is a cancer survivors uh, monument that was essentially um, placed by the city uh, through a donation um, and through a partnership with a survivor a, a cancer uh, foundation. Um, it wasn't really commissioned by the public art program, but we have kind of adopted it as a necessity to maintain it. So we now consider it a part of a public art collection and do put our maintenance funds towards keeping it looking good. And um, once the parks uh, master plan consultants come up with some options for the revised master plan, they will present to the art and public places committee for input about the art itself, um, whether it should stay in the park, be re relocated, uh, within the park or be relocated to a, another location altogether. Those are essentially the three options that are um, on the table right now. And they're going through their public input process and community engagement process currently uh, to come up with some um, essentially alternatives, some designs um, to look at. So just wanted to mention that in case you have heard that or if that comes up, that, that that is how that they know that art and public places will need to be one of their stakeholders that they present to once they get to that point in their process. Uh, those are the department reports that I have. And Rice, I just wanted to see if there's anything else you'd like to add. No? Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Great. Thanks, Tara. Uh, for the Fremont Park re reworking of the master plan, do you know if there's a timeline associated with when we might be hearing this? I know we have some vacations coming up, so or over the summer, want <laughs> to be mindful. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't have that right in front of me. I'd be happy to look at it and send you it. You could also, I, I believe there's a website on the city's website, a web page on the city's website devoted to the project. So that um, I'll find that link, I'll send it out to the committee. You can take a look at their proposed timeline. They have not contacted me yet to get on a future agenda, but you may be able to tell a general timeline from their overall project timeline. Great, good information, thanks. Do any committee members have any questions for city staff to wrap up our meeting today? Uh, seeing none, I would like to close our meeting. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>